Hello and welcome to Breaking Geek Radio, the podcast, the premier flagship and international podcast of LRM Online and the Genreverse Podcast Network. I was going to say I'm joined by the remainder of the Latastic Four, but unfortunately, Danny's stuck in traffic. Uh, so drive safe. Sounds like the roads are crazy out there. Um, you know what's weird in my head? I kept imagining him like getting out of his car in Dubai and doing like a, a Tom Cruise run home to try to drive. <laughs> <the podcast. laughs> like, I don't know. That's just that's just where my head goes. And I think it's because I'm looking at the Tom Cruise story. Um, we've got a lot of news to talk about today. A lot of things have been happening in the world of entertainment. We're going to get to that in a second. Apparently, Jammer's having internet issues and would like to to gripe about them. Go, sir. Uh, okay. Go. So here here is my question. Or not my oh, question. Here's question. my... It's, a question. No, it's, not, it's oh. not a question. Today is June 3rd. Currently... Okay. I have utilized 378 gigabytes in data All between right. me and my wife. That is too much data. It's a lot of gigabits. That's a lot of gigabits. Uh, here's the problem is that before that, generally speaking, the highest we've ever gotten in a whole month is 800. And we average closer to 600. So I have no idea what the fuck is happening. Uh, we actually, you know, I spent some money on like freaking Norden antivirus checking to see if someone has gotten into our computer and is data mining me uh, or, or freaking mining Bitcoin with my I was going to say, are you crypto machine. mining for somebody you don't even know? <laughs> yeah, about? it's that's what I think. That's what I was wondering. Is someone doing that? And I have no idea. So now I had to go and I was like, all right, I went to my internet and be like, okay, what's the breakdown? They can't tell me that because I have my own router because I'm fucking smart, but apparently stupid because I have my own router. So now uh, I went to my router person, my, my the, whoever develops it, and I was like, hey, can you tell me how the, the divvy up is? And they're like, no, your router doesn't have that. So I was like, fuck. And by the way, my cap was 1.2 uh, terabytes a month. So I'm at 378 on day three. So that's, you know, fast approaching. <clears throat> so instead I decided to go ahead and buy unlimited for an extra $25 a month for now that's and nice. to get their fucking stupid ass rented modem slash Wi-Fi thing so wow. that I could hook it up and then I could see what is using so much data. So, so you that paid they them more money it up. so you could see why you're paying them more money. So that I could, after I'm done knowing why and fixing it, I could dial it back, return their machine and just get my normal shit going. But yeah, essentially. I feel like this should be an internet poll. Like what? what's on Jammer's data? Like what is it? <laughs> You're yeah, tell like us what it is. next Paul, week. What's your no. data at? No, no, what, um, no. What what is what is taking up so much yeah. data? Is it somebody else on there downloading porn? Like, what's going on? Like, I don't. That's like, what none I'm of saying. my machines. That, that none of my machines have uh, have any malware or spyware or viruses in them. Like, I checked all of them. You're confused. But you me. should at least be able to see <clears throat> what well, device is using the much data. Say that again, Jonesy. You should I, at least was... be able to see what devices using the most data once again my modem doesn't allow that that's fascinating so how, i how use how old is that I had, router it's a new yeah. modem i got it last year somebody is not telling you the truth about yeah because al almost everything in the last five five years allows you to see a uh see a breakdown of mac addresses and I yeah. ips assigned i know using that's that. what, that's what i would think that's what, what i would think like so the my uh isp they're saying no and I can understand why, because they don't have access to the data because I have my own router. I get that. Eris, I'm calling you out. Are you lying to me? It sounds sounds like someone either didn't yes. quite understand you or just didn't want to just didn't want to help you. Yeah, that guy's like, uh, I did this too many times today. Well, I don't understand why you're using data. Like, I just pay for Internet and it's unlimited it's Internet. Wait, what? Not ev you, not I everyone has that. Guarantee you, Nick. It's it's probably not. Your cap is just super super high. But okay. if it is, yeah. I mean, there are unlimited <clears throat> plans out there. But almost everything's got at least well like through a, a phone. Gig. Yeah, but like Xfinity, you, yeah. you just buy internet. You know, it's not. It's rarely amount. unlimited. It's rarely unlimited. It might be unlimited, but I, I feel like given. I never knew they charge you for data at a. Yeah, they. I mean, they definitely like use Comcast and stuff. Okay. Yeah, at some point, like <clears throat> most people, just never hit it. And that's the yeah, thing. The the fact that I'm 378 gigabytes in on day three, cause for concern. What, How what do you happening? know that? Because I'm looking at my thing. It says 378 gigabytes, blah, blah, blah. It's, it's so used. weird that they'll tell you that, but not tell you. 
Well, they can't break it down because they don't have access to the parse data because they don't own the router. That's strange. I, don't, I think they're lying. Like I said, they're lying. No, no. I mean, ISP, I don't think is lying, but maybe no, Eris is. Yeah. Yeah. That's strange. Okay. Well, uh, <laughs> looking forward to seeing how much porn is being downloaded on somebody else's computer. Thanks to I your guess. Eris. Yeah. Loading. And I'm like, is there some guy, like, are my neighbors using it? I have a hard time imagining it, but, and, and I even changed my password first and it was fine for like a day. I changed my internet. I changed my internet network and the password. Yeah. That was, that was, you know, troubleshooting step one and it worked for a hot second. And I actually even checked on to see what devices are on my, uh, my internet. And there is one device that I don't recognize and it's yeah. unknown. May, I don't know whose it is though. That's the one. You should go out in your cold a second and just scream, are but you I, entertained? But I, but <laughs> are I you know. entertained? I want to go there and I want to be like, okay, how much data are you using that unknown device? But I don't have that answer. So that's that's, that's where I'm at. That's super strange. I don't know. We'll find out. Check back next week, kids, to find out what's on. I mean, I'm not going to be I'm not going to be here for the next two weeks. So check check back in two weeks to find out what's on. No, three weeks because I won't be check here back for the next in two weeks. To find out. <laughs> We'll find out. We'll find out. We're interested. But not as interested as these trailers. We have some of them. Not a lot of them, but some of them. Um, let's start with Pinocchio. And it looks Pinocchio. kind of like... Sure, yes, that. Let's start. It is a magical retelling of the classic that we all know and love, I guess. I, I have no affinity. I, there was a period of time when, when I was like five or six where I rewatched Pinocchio a bunch. I like the I haven't since. The donkeys. I like the music. <laughs> scared me. I like the whale was scary. Oh, turning the kids into donkeys no. or asses. That's um, scary. And I, the question I have for you all specifically about this trailer isn't like, is it good or is it bad? So we've got a trailer that stars Tom Hanks. What I'd like to know from you all is Disney has had, I think, relatively mixed results when it comes to um, live action adaptations of their animated stuff. And saying it's mixed is being generous. Do you think, based on what you've seen, that they'll they're going to be able to turn it around? Are you Let's talking about reviews? Jammer. Oh, Qua- just general quality. Okay, okay, they so make you're, a talking, lot you're talking money. about quality. They make yeah. a lot of money, like yeah. no doubt about it. these things oh, are yeah. profitable. Absolutely. endeavors. especially your <clears throat> Um, I will say this one feels, and I feel like I'm also in the minority of some of my opinions about these. Like, I don't like The Lion King; it's boring. Whatever. Never watched. I really did enjoy Beauty and the Beast, though, even though it kind of was still going a lot of the same beats. I feel like they embellished in a lot of the right places. And I like the couple of songs that they had extra. Um, You love Mulan. (sighs) No, I did not. Aladdin, (laughs) Aladdin, Mulan. Aladdin, Aladdin, I was thought I thought was fun. It was okay. I didn't think it was bad. I hope people are Uh, watching this episode. (laughs) Yeah, seeing Jonesy's face. I thought it was all right. I thought it was fun. I've seen it a couple times since. It's not great, but I, I enjoyed it. Um, what was the other Mulan? I just thought was boring. Jungle Mulan Book. was so boring. I like Jungle Book. Yeah. I like Jungle Book quite a bit, actually. <clears throat> but anyways, this looks like it'll probably, it, it could skew a little more positive. And I think one thing it has going for it is I'm not as attached to the source material. So I probably won't recognize it as much. And also it will likely deviate a lot more because that original one is probably what 70 minutes or something. So there's a lot more material to mind. They can really dig deeper into those things. It's not a situation like Aladdin where it already has these sort of moderate uh, modern sensibilities that we have now um, or modern kind of style of storytelling. It's an older style of storytelling that's being updated for sort of a modern style. So I think there's just a lot more flexibility there and it'll feel less like it's just kind of repeating or recycling kind of like what the Lion King did. So I think to me, I, it looks like it could be good, even though I'm not a huge fan of Pinocchio. It looks interesting to see. Okay. Nick Dahl, what are your, what are your Pinocchio thoughts? Without having seen the trailer, uh, <laughs> here's the question. You, know, you, could, you could have put it on the screen or on your phone and had seen it in any of like the, the few minutes beforehand, or at least just had the visuals. I'm I'm COVID foggy. So oh, yeah, that's I can fair. pull off the podcast. Um, do you think Tom Hanks, like him choosing this, may maybe like God, CM Foggy Day, uh, means it might be a better project because maybe he's more picky than a lot of the people they've gotten? 
It's a good question. I'm not really sure then again, how I, Tom Hanks usually picks his movies. I, I, I'm trying to think, are there any ones where it's just like, oh, why'd you do that, Tom? I can't think no, of anyone that's just really. garbage. Yeah. 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 There are ones that have kind of gone wrong, but it's never like, oh, he picked a bad movie. It was like, oh, that looked great. The trailer, yeah, I can't think but of any, got, any of his movies that are bad. That's what I'm saying. Maybe that speaks to the quality of this compared to the other ones. So Maybe. I have points to make even without seeing the trailer. <laughs> Good job. And while being COVID fogged. By the way, everyone, everyone uh, send your thoughts and prayers to Nick for his COVIDness. Those don't work. Uh, they don't, but you know, it's still a nice Stick your prayers say. in a bag and give them to someone else. Yeah, those don't work. All right. So um, moving on from what did you think? Wait, what do you think? What's I your said opinion? I don't have any. I said I don't have any affinity for the for the. I I don't care. I think Nick's right. I think that Tom Hanks is pretty choosy when it comes to his products. I have not seen any of his Apple TV Plus stuff, but what I have heard of it, it's generally well. Oh yeah, he had that 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 sci-fi dog movie, right? Well, he had two. And so one of them one? was the submarine movie, yeah, and then the other one was the sci-fi dog one, Fletch, not Fletch, something. So it's, it's, an, it's like a one name, right? Benji, except it's not Benji, <laughs> something like that. Toto. Um, yeah, I, I think Nick's probably right. I think that Tom Hanks has a pretty decent track record. We'll find out when Elvis comes out. That doesn't that doesn't make you want to at least give it a shot. Um, it's streaming on Disney Plus, so I'm sure I'll show it to my kids and I'll just hang out with them. Oh, it's not even theatrical. Mm-mm. It's another straight to Disney Plus. Interesting. I, don't, I can't think yeah. of anyone who no one even counts Lady in the Tramp, even though that was a Disney Plus remake. Like it's one we didn't bring up, and I don't ever hear anyone talk about. So I mean, I don't bad. talk about it because it doesn't make any sense to have an interracial relationship that far in the past, and just no one talks about it. Like no one brings it up. It's super weird. And Wait, I'm not what? talking about the dogs. <laughs> oh, I didn't know there's an interracial relationship in that movie. Yeah, because Finch, 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 Finch is the, thank you, Kyle. Yeah, it's a period piece, and you're just like, oh, that's okay. Just no, not fin- gonna... Finch right, isn't, sure. no, Finch isn't a period piece, to be clear. No, no, no yeah. No, Finch is okay. <laughs> Finch is what we were trying to think of, folks. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Finch, okay, gotcha. So Fletch isn't, that was pretty close, but it's also a different franchise. So <laughs> it is different actor, different this franchise, different era. I knew it was an F. That's all I could recall. Finch is close. So Finch is something I never would have, I never would have stumbled on Finch on my own. So thank you, Kyle. Guys, ready to move on to the Bad Batch? I'm sorry, not the Bad Batch, but Devotion. Yes, tell me what it's about. <laughs> Summarize. Summarize it, please. So Devotion is the story of a Korean War pilot. And I'm sorry, yeah, Korean War pilot. And one of the things, that's probably one of the things that drew me to it is that it is a story about a war we don't hear a lot about. and also helps that it stars Jonathan Majors. And it also stars Glenn Powell, who, oddly enough, is going to have two Aviator movies come out in the same year, huh. which has got to be some sort of record. Uh, Glenn Powell is Hangman from um, Top Gun Maverick, for those okay. of you all who are not up on names. Um, I liked him in that. Yeah, he was fun. He was one he was of fun. my favorite characters. Bagman. Um, yeah. <laughs> I thought that he was pretty fun in that, and I, I generally enjoy Jonathan Major's stuff. Um Jammer, since you did see the trailer, I found myself it? torn because, Uh-oh. on a story level, it seems like it, it's felt very, you know, sort of heavy and serious and all that. And it looks like it could be engaging to watch for sure. But after, you know, watching Top Gun Maverick <laughs> and then seeing these very CG things, and even my mind went back to like Dunkirk, where they did very much like in person type stuff. This just feels like, oh, it really just pulls you out of it almost, just how just full on CG it is. Um, and I'm sure the story will be fine, but it's just interesting to watch, like from a filmmaking perspective, just how much of a difference seeing so, like a full movie, like mostly practical in that aspect, being executed, and then just going to this trailer. Um, so nothing point. against. Nothing against this movie. This movie looks like it could be good. It's a story I haven't heard of. Um, and as he said, it's a war that we hardly see any anything of. Uh, Vietnam takes a lot of the wind out of the Korean sails. That sounded bad. The Korean war sails. That's better. <clears throat> and uh, yeah, it, it'll be interesting. To, I'm interested in the story, but I'm a little underwhelmed by the filmmaking just okay. because I'm spoiled now. You have yeah, I think that's Jonathan a great Majors. point. Yeah, you basically... Um... 
you basically hit the nail on the head. It's the idea that, you know, has Top Gun ruined all movies, all movies just generally. I mean, um, give us a couple of years and we'll forget. And then we'll be back to like, all right, just fine. stop making movies for a couple of years. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, just stop, you know, don't watch Top Gun Maverick and then don't make any more movies with great filmmaking like Top Gun Maverick. And then we won't be as spoiled. Mission Impossible. Okay. Mission Impossible. Yeah, you've got until next year. Oh, uh, yeah, that's true. You got like Good a point. full year almost. Um, I, I, I was talked over a little bit because I, I interrupted, but you had me a Jonathan Majors. Since I haven't seen the trailer. That's my input. Love the guy. Yeah, I'm about the same. So not the same stratosphere as Tom Hanks, but of the things that Jonathan Majors chooses, I always like them. So he's one of those younger actors that every time he's in a thing, I'm like, oh, what is that? I want to see it. Hmm. So he's gotten there. Guys ready to move on? Let's do it. All right. Great Moving trailer. on to the Bad Batch. Uh, I'm sorry that Danny isn't here. I was really looking forward to talking to him about this because never you watch the Bad Batch, right? Yeah. You know, I, I've actually considered, I, I want to come in here with a question and, and ask you, because I don't think I've ever asked any of you if the Bad Batch is worth watching. I've asked about the other shows, but the Bad Batch seems like it, it kind of has flown under the radar. Like a lot of, unlike a lot of people, I don't have a problem with the animation style of these animated star wars shows i just have a problem with just the writing it's always like overly quick there's a lot of jokes that aren't funny it's a it's super cheesy it just feels like there's no weight to it um but how does the bad batch fare for matt same same (laughs) so i'm I'm not (laughs) yeah it's 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 very samey so if you if you have any issues with any of the other stuff you're gonna have why do people like it why do people like it i think that people star wars well i think so part of it is you're already kind of hooked into the universe it's the same question of like well why would you watch anything that's middling to mediocre and then do we lose a jonesy jonesy down I think Jonesy, Jonesy is, is confirmed as oh, he's he confirmed goes. as a reptile human based on his image. Oh, <laughs> that, dang it. That was a good image. Oh, no. Oh, no. You lost me. I was giving such no. a good explanation. You were. You were. I'm uh, done again. No, it's okay. I think oh, we he has back. the internet trouble now. <laughs> I'm back. Jesus yes. Christ. You're, you're good. Jonesy. So you, rewind your thoughts a, a bit. <sighs> You literally just talked about how why would any why do people watch anything mediocre? They're, they're, they're plugged into the universe. That's essentially where you yeah. started. Yeah, I was like, man, I had a, I had an answer. I had an answer for it. <laughs> uh, yeah, I think they're just plugged in the universe and seeing the live action stuff come to life. People are super excited for that. Like watching people get excited about Cad Bane um, See, coming back. I don't like that. Because it just makes me feel like these people who watch the, the animated shows are like, oh, the anime show's so good. But they're still waiting for that live action validation. Why? Mm, that, But that is a new phenomenon, right? I think mm. that in, initially, I liked the Clone Wars because I felt like it did a great job of fleshing out the stuff that Lucas failed to do when he did the prequel trilogy. Um, so if you are a fan of those things. So first of all, Soka fantastic character so it made it very easy to latch on to that and then going forward now it's just become a thing where these characters are showing up in live action um and i think that's fun so now because of rebels we're going to get ezra bridger um and sabine wren now we're getting ahsoka tano from clone wars and we got Cad bane hmm? they're on hasn't he been on the animated shows already I don't remember. Kyle Thrawn. says yes. Yeah, he's, he's the Thrawn. Thrawn is the blue blue guy. Oh, uh, I think oh he said Thrawn. Thrawn. Yeah. I think he said Ron. Yeah. yeah, he said Ron. Ron. Like, Who the you fuck know, is Ron? Everyone's favorite Star Wars <laughs> character. His name is just Ron. <laughs> Ron. I just imagine. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> Nick Offerman. I was like, Who the fuck is Ron? Yeah, Thrawn. Yes, Grand Admiral Thrawn. What's your um, uh, flight sign, Bob? <laughs> I don't know. Um. So yeah. I, I I would imagine that there's just a knock on effect of having watched those things now. Now you're getting to see it come to life. Um, my initial entry to the Clone Wars is yeah, I just I liked that story. I like those characters. Mm, so okay. um, I, uh, oh, the question. Wait, sorry. The question I was going to ask you guys. It seems like Ian McDermott is back as the Emperor. So I heard and, the Emperor has returned. 
Right. Somehow. <laughs> um, so wait, when when does the Bad Batch take place again? During the height it, of the Empire, right? Yes. No, well, so yeah, right after Order 66. Oh, okay. So it's still, uh, okay. still like 20 years before. Yeah, this is like... They, it's that so it's, on, they've got it's not after the original with. trilogy. No. No. Okay. I thought it was maybe during it, but I was wrong. <laughs> no. Yeah. It's in that right time period that's going to make Kyle go crazy when he start messing with canon. <laughs> <laughs> and for that, you can listen to the Cantina, our Star Wars <laughs> podcast. <laughs> Um, so yeah, the question I was going to ask you guys, is this the series or the, is this the project that he was hinting at? So a little while ago, uh, he had hinted that the emperor was going to return. It looks like this might be it. Um, Probably. Oh yeah. And we all figured it was going to be live action, like Andor or something. Yeah. Um, that's I also a possibility this. though. Yeah, it is possible. I prefer this, like just go, uh, I, yeah, go there. That's the one still I shot from the trailer was yeah, someone put a picture of. Uh, Paul Patina online. I was like, "Wait, you said go, go there, go where?" What? Jonesy, 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 oh, Jonesy. Like, go there. Oh yeah, go to the cartoon, like go cartoon realm, go away. Oh, okay, okay. You, you don't want to see him in live action. No, I'm done. I'm good. I figured he could even be a voice in Obi Wan, but we wouldn't see him. Not like Vader no. talking to him or something. That's still. Oh yeah, he can action-y. also be. He can also be an Obi Wan. Can I say one thing? I guess we'll talk about Obi Wan a little bit later. Well, yeah, I gotta I'm say it now. Here. Yeah, in case we don't. No. Why don't they use oh, any are. of the original music? Like they don't use Darth Vader's theme. They don't use like any of the original music at all. Like not even to play on it. Kyle knows. Uh, so w- Williams has uh, worked on a uh, the new Obi Wan theme and in- incorporating stuff from the prequel trilogy, and uh, there there are pieces of original music that are blended and rewritten into the the current ones. Why they won't just reuse like I them? Hear, dun, dun, I don't dun, know. Dun, I thought this. Dun, I thought dun. the same. But there there are touches of it, and uh, uh, definitely some more prequel era stuff that you'll mm-hmm. you'll hear in there. So okay. Well, I think you have, you have to sell new things. So that's part of it. I think part of the rationale is like, we need more merchandise. So you can't just keep pumping out the same new fucking soundtrack. imperial theme. <laughs> yeah. So you have, that's part of it. I also imagine as a creative, this is just me spitballing. You look at this and you go, these aren't the people that they were when you saw them in the OT trilogy. And so you give room to evolve their musical themes and their scores mm. and things of that nature. That'd be the argument that I would And even make. the Imperial March like didn't show up till Empire. Yeah. So. Yeah, that's true. It's so iconic. We think yep. like if you were to ask, I wonder if you were to ask people, is this song in the original Star Wars? If they how many would yeah, say yes? They'd say yes. Yeah. So yeah, I mean it's the same reason that uh, what's the line? Many Bothans died, and you're like, oh no, that was Return that of was the Jedi. Third one, right? Right. Yeah. Return of the Jedi, not a new hope. Yeah. But when we're talking about and it um, wasn't Mon Mon Rogue Mon. One. Right, right. Uh wasn't it? Was it? I thought it was. No, it wasn't. I don't think it was. I don't think she was in the pretty third sure one. Was. was it? Sure, sure, Hold on. Pretty, I'm pretty sure. Um, Kyle's job is to look it up, not yours. <laughs> but I think that that's what am that's I looking part up? Of the rationale. <laughs> many Bothans died. You know, I don't know. Many Bothans died. But he wants to know if Moth, it's Mon Mothma says it. It's Jedi, but who says it? Mon Mothma says it. She says it. Is she in that movie? Bam. I guess was, yeah. Yeah. Jedi. She's at the very. What she's the one given the brief, briefing. And she's not she's, in a new. She's not hope, in the first right? one. She's not I don't in think a new. So. Hope. She's not. Oh, in I, it's I the old. And around in my head. See, it's it's reaching it. the point. I don't have to look anything up for the OT guys. Come on. Yeah, it's the old bearded guy and a new hope. The Jason. Oh yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that guy. That guy. Um. So. Yeah, I, sorry. I asked her a question. Did I, topic. Yeah, you got it. Did even that's ask fine. That's going, fine. It was asked. just the music. I was just asking why they. I feel like we've answered it. Yeah, and that and that's kind of the thing we keep coming back to. So the conversation we keep having on Discord is there's some people that like this and some people don't. This being Obi Wan, and I'm of the opinion that I haven't seen anything that's not explicable. So I don't know what that means. Everything mean? that people seem to have issues with that seem to keep coming up in discord there's an explanation for oh you could explain it away. <laughs> here i i have something i don't want to transition into an obi-wan review but i have something that is less explicable let's hear it now nah, the I'm running the weird running 
The weird running. I, I just think I love it. Like I, lo- I loved it in the first, in the opening scene. They're like, let's run. Let's get out of here. And they all just kind of like hobble and like they kind of just like go around, like not in a straight line. I'm like, fucking run, you guys. I think this faster. is just a Disney. This is just a Disney issue. So remember my complaint from. No, it's 100% a director issue. It's not like an actual. No, no, no. no, no how about, how about, how about, oh, Kyle remember has, yeah. um, Strange, Doctor Strange 2 when they're like running down the hall? And fucking Wanda's like hobbling down the hall, and for some reason they can't Ooh. run faster than her. Like I disagree. Two feet. No, no, her. that's that's a horror trope that was leaned into. That was done on purpose, and I think that's fine. You could explain that because it's a part of the genre. This is inexplicable. <laughs> I don't know what that means. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, jammer uh something we we discussed on the cantina is uh the volume is limited in its space not just at an empty floor Mm. but if you put objects in there as well and uh it does to me look like obi-wan uh mcgregor mcgregor's trying to trying to jog but it doesn't look like he's got enough like space and then there's spatial awareness because it's not like a blue screen behind him it looks like the the back so, running, running in circles. Yes, that's yes. exactly what I was going to yeah. say. Why do you why do you think yeah. the cuts are so so short? Like for fucking that? Looney Tunes. Do we have exactly. any Looney Tunes outtakes that we are you know we get to I look wish. forward to? I, I so wish. that makes sense. You know so like somebody like swinging a lightsaber against the volume. No, but there's some things about it, and, and I, the I said this, I've said this to Kyle on many occasions, where it's just like worrying about those little things is like silly. It doesn't matter ultimately, and it's true, but it really doesn't. But it's, there's sometimes where when those guys were going to capture Leia, it felt like a scene out of Power Rangers. Like, almost like they were just going, oh, blah, 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 like, kind of just going like that and kind of bobbing back and forth. So they didn't actually, <laughs> couldn't actually, you know, chase her. <laughs> Once again, on a story level, it doesn't matter that much, but still, it's a little annoying to watch. Mm. <laughs> Not something I noticed, but I also play games while watching Kenobi because it doesn't deserve 100% of my attention. And at what time, at what point did you start playing video games while watching Kenobi? When I started it, because that's why I did Boba Fett. So too. you had no idea. You had no idea whether or not it deserved this. But you just, you started assuming that. You it's a very passive game. Get, what game was it? Was it the Star Trek game? Yeah, it's a Star Trek game. I could sit and not have to do anything for like, if, I, if a scene's really good or I'm interested, like someone showing up like Vader, then I'm like, oh, yeah, I'll stop to watch this and it will be interesting yeah. to watch uh, Andor because I don't think Andor was shot in the volume, and from the trailers, no. it looks it look, just, yeah, boom. It looks like I'm gonna, yeah, yeah, and I mean, we it's like I know, you know, from people who work on it that it's just like it's a movie to them, like it is straight up a movie. Try to get us off track for a moment. That's fine. This is this is what it's all about. It is what it's about. It is what it's about. Um, so going on to a slightly um, more sobering topic, apparently um, the third sister, I'm bad with numbers. Mozing. Oh God. Which, which yeah. number sister is she? Is third sister? Yeah. Third, third sister. sister. Third yeah. sister. Ha ha. Yes. Better with numbers. So navigation <laughs> and numbers. I'm just terrible with I'm just going just gonna to say that. Um, Moe Zingram has been receiving a lot of hate online since the series started almost immediately because the thing that I recall even before the show came out was people talking about her hair, um, which is a consistent topic. People have talked about it in Star Trek with Sneakwood Martin Green, and people were like, how do you get your hair braided in space? It's like, why the fuck does it matter? <laughs> so how um, do you get your hair braided in space? Leia has... The most complicated space haircut of all time. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I th- it's it's interesting that the conversation almost always starts there. Um, but there have been um, messages lobbed at her in social media, like you're a diversity hire or you're not the first black person in space, things of that nature. Uh, it was so bad that what kind of Star a Wars. Is that? <laughs> what barely kind of any black people that? in space. <laughs> You're not the first one. It's like, okay, I'm not. It's true. But and I'll yeah. never be Lando, but I deserve to fucking be here. Well, um, so Star Wars had to come out and say, you know, we are proud of Moses Ingram to Star Wars. I'm sorry, to welcome 
Moses Ingram to the Star Wars family and excited for Reva's story to unfold. If anyone intends to make her feel in any way unwelcome, we have only one thing to say. We resist. Um, nope. They went on to say there are more than 20 million sentient species in Star Wars galaxy. Don't choose to be racist. Um, it was also so bad that Ewan McGregor had to come out and say something as well. He recorded a message and in some he said, if you are being racist, that you're not a Star Wars fan. So I'm so, sure racist Star Wars fans love that. <laughs> but it had to be said, especially by the man himself. Now yeah. we need to I also like it's James Earl Jones <laughs> still voicing Vader, you racist. People don't know that he, everyone doesn't know that. So a really good friend of mine from law school, we had this conversation a few years ago and he just did not know that that was James Earl Jones. And I was like, how are you my friend? <laughs> <laughs> like, I, I felt like I failed him. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you were my friend. <laughs> you were my brother. <laughs> I loved you. Um, so I guess the question I wanted to ask you all about this is, um, why? Why does it seem like when it comes to sci-fi and fantasy, this is a consistent thing that rears its ugly head? Because nerds have often grown up, many of them white, feeling ostracized by a lot of people, and they feel territorial about things. And they also grew up in bubbles. So when something feels like it's being changed and not specifically made towards them like things have been for their entire lives they feel assaulted yeah i feel like it's the overall thing in this country right now where yeah white males feel like they're being attacked um like the the, i don't want to bring up sad events but yeah it's it's kind of been a thing locally culture it's definitely been a nerd thing for a while um you know anytime someone's you're like valkyrie or like, especially Heimdall is black. They're like, there aren't black gods. And it's like, they're aliens. <laughs> yeah, they're like, there's like, there's no black gods in Norway. It's just like, well, there's also not in Norway. So there's that. As God. I remember no that being right? one of the biggest complaints. Yeah, that Norwegian. It's not, I don't think anyone complained about Nick. I mean, I guess I wasn't as Aaron aware, but Nick Fury, I thought everyone was fucking stoked about Samuel L. Jackson's. Well, that's they because don't... they had already done it in the comic books. Yeah. Well, in Ultimate. And they made it really weird. They yeah. did it in a really weird way in the 616. But so I've got a take on it. And my take is I think that to some degree Disney has enabled this. Um, and this is not obviously this is not always, right? But in recent years, looking at the new trilogy, you saw what happened with John Boyega and um Kelly Tran. Kelly Marie Tran. And what was frustrating watching those situations from the outside was you saw their roles get diminished significantly. You saw in marketing with the Force Awakens poster. So in the trailer, John Boyega is the first thing that you see, right? He's a stormtrooper. He takes his helmet off. In the poster that gets shipped overseas to Asian countries, he is this big next to everyone else. And I'm, I'm making bigger and smaller. He's significantly smaller than everyone else on the poster. Whereas the force awakens poster we see here, he's just as big as Ray. And and bigger than Han and Chewie. Obviously right. they're not as important. You can barely see him in the other one. Um, the black Panther poster. So here you see um, T'Challa's actual face. And the one that gets shipped overseas. That's why there's two posters. I didn't know the other that. poster is the one of his mask. And I, f- and I find that to be fascinating. And I would say like to some degree, Disney is not necessarily culpable because they didn't cause it, but they definitely enable it to some degree in the modern era. I think I could definitely, you know, with regards to them changing marketing for foreign audiences, I, I, that to me is full on studio stuff, whatever it sucks, but I get it. I think you were on something definitely a lot more when it has to do with the diminishing of Kelly Marie Tran and John Boyega's roles in like the rise of Skywalker because of fan backlash. It's like validating them. So when people are like, what 
what is your goal? Like I've heard a lot of people say, what is your goal here by calling, saying, you know, attacking this woman? And no one says it, but their goal is, hey. You do exactly what's we, been done before. Yeah, do what's been done before. You've We've complained in the past and then it's had an effect. We'll do it again. Yeah. That's what mm-hmm. I think it is. Interesting. So yeah, that's I, I can definitely agree how like it's it's almost empowering to be like, hey, we make a difference. Hey, we fucking changed Sonic. We made him we made him good looking again. Um, you know, maybe we could bully another studio into something else. But it is nice and refreshing though that and I don't think Star Wars officially ever really came out in defense of Kelly Marie Tran or John Boyega. Am I mistaken there? They never I, did. Right? I remember Kathleen Kennedy said something, I think. But not um, like the official Star Wars account. Right now. And I think it's because well, at this good. point, they know, I think they know, right? I think they hope, I'm hoping that in the ensuing five years, they have learned something. Yeah. God, has it been five years since the last Jedi? Force Awakens? Was it Force Awakens was what, 17 or 14? 20, 15. It wasn't four. four wow. 15. Force Awakens was 15. Rogue okay, so 16, seven years. So on. Shit. Seven years Shit. ago. Shit. I would say seven years years is long enough to learn a thing, but that's my impression, especially in terms of social media. Yeah. It's, it's really bullshit. It's awful. And I, it was funny because I remember thinking like, uh, you know, I heard that controversy and I was watching the show. I'm like, she is no worse than Rupert friend is in his role. They are the same. They have the same level of cartoonish monotoneness. Mm -hmm. There's no difference. Maybe you have a problem with how the character is being portrayed, but that's just all of the Inquisitor type characters being played in live action right now to me. Um, so, you know, whatever. I, I think character's fine. It's perfectly serviceable. Yeah, no complaints. We'll see. We'll see what happens. Um, you guys ready to move on? Yeah. Yep. All right. So back into, we'll go in the realm of happy before we get into the realm of like, ugh. <laughs> humans suck apparently national treasure three is being worked on and it could become reality uh, sooner rather than later and I, one thing i don't know is whether or not this is in response to um massive talent yeah massive talent or if this is something that was always gestating but it sounds like regardless of that jerry bruckheimer wants him back so there's a question during a Reddit Ask Me Anything where someone asked the mega producer, uh, would they want to work with Nicolas Cage again? He said, absolutely. I love Nicolas. He's a brilliant actor. And we are currently working on a script for National Treasure. And this, would, again, would be the third one in the series. Um, are you all excited about either of those prospects? The fact that there's another National Treasure coming out? And do you want to see Nick Cage return to the role? I wouldn't see it if Nick Cage wasn't it because I've never been a huge fan of the franchise. Like, I don't, I remember the first one. I don't remember Wait, any plot details second. about you the second. Hold on. You just don't watch things. If they have, if you have something, you're like, I don't like it, but it has someone I like. So therefore I'll watch it. You're that type of Not person? Not in theaters, unless mm. it's for this podcast. Well, it depends who it is. I don't think there's any life to that franchise without Nicolas Cage. Like it's a serviceable like action adventure Disagree, like but all right spelunking a little trying to be a little bit like Indiana Jones but not at all being like Indiana Jones thankfully. I think but, you just think too highly of Indiana Jones, but go ahead. I don't think it has an opinion. Makes I don't think it affects. If I like National Treasure, it's me it not being the same as Indiana Jones. I don't think has I anything agree. to so do why, with it. Why did you bring it up then? Well, because I mean, it's just that's the kind of movie it is. <laughs> same with like um. Uh, the new uh, one we watched this year that's getting a sequel, Uncharted. You just said it doesn't matter, and then you just say it's the kind of movie it is. Which is it, Nick? Well, I mean, no, I'm just saying that's fine. Like the directors could say it's like Indiana Jones all day, and some of them have obviously moments that remind you of it, especially Uncharted. But and I like I like Uncharted. It's just National Treasure has never been one I'm not interested in. I've seen both of them at theaters. They're fine. I pro- unless it's for the podcast, even I probably wouldn't see the next one in theaters. Even I would Nicolas just wait Cage. till Disney Plus. So that's all. Even with Nicolas Cage, you wouldn't see it in theaters without nah. the podcast. Okay. Yeah. All right. I would wait. Disney, everyone's good at getting their stuff out pretty quick online. So that's one I'd wait for Disney Plus. So me, fuck yes, I'm interested in this. And also, fuck yes, I'm interested that Nicolas Cage is back. I love the National Treasure series. I think it's it's super fun. 
Um, it is basically what I wanted the Da Vinci Code movies to be, and they never mm. were nearly as good as National Treasure movies, which is really weird to me, considering, I don't know. Uh, but no, <laughs> I think they're a lot of fun. I know that National Treasure is also having a series that's coming out on Disney yes. Plus that's going to mm. be focused, I think, on more indigenous lore, which is really cool. That's cool. Um, and I'm interested to see how that goes, if it's going to kind of segue and tie into things. I also know that John Turtletop, the director of the two movies, has talked in the past how, you know, this was a successful franchise. Like the first movie grossed amount, the second movie did better, I think. And it, yes. it had all the makings for a successful franchise, but then Marvel really hit it big. And they're mm-hmm. like, why bother with these, you know, these original properties? Nobody cares about movies. history. Right. And so that's why it's- pirates took over money they would have given to national treasure because they made so many maybe. fucking pirates movies. yeah maybe um but yeah essentially it all came down to spending money on sure things as opposed to more risky properties and even though it was a franchise it's technically probably more risky than a marvel or a pirates franchise movie um and well, now it's also probably cheaper but i would say it's and i would say it's a sure thing <clears throat> unless they wait yeah too but long. It, but it's taken a while you know they've actually been talking about this for years like ever since the the second one came out they've been they've been kind of working and developing it on some level and it's kind of stalled out and then um and and now it's like i believe yeah they're working on it whether or not it's going to happen i don't know but i think disney plus and just having these other avenues really Mm. just sort of opens up things a little bit more granted i could think this could be a theatrical release but i think i think i could see disney kind of looking to sort of spread the franchise love a bit they seem to be opening that that door a little bit and this seems like a good property to sort of test the waters a bit more especially if they do have a disney plus tie-in series and they can help use that to bolster a potential theatrical release there's some good synergy going on there potentially and you guys have convinced me to rewatch the first two i mean if you don't like it if you don't like well i mean i I didn't dislike it either it was just like i saw a movie it was fine. Kind of I like was that, was that, was light, just... that was the lightest of pushes to get no, you. It was, it was... I know, but like, <laughs> no, I haven't seen them for like over ten years because the last one came out when we were in college. So that's like, well, I, the, the, yeah. The, the first, the I think it's the thing that really I reacted to was you saying like without Nicolas Cage, I wouldn't even bother. I'm just like, well, well then it's... it doesn't matter because it he doesn't change that much of it. Like honestly, I hate to say it, he's not like a huge draw. He's not Nicolas Cage. <laughs> Uh oh! Did we lose him? I think they heard him complaining about his internet. I think that's what's happening. <laughs> Whoever was stealing Jeremy's internet has just just stolen it all. <laughs> all right. I love the um, image he's stuck with. With the oh, oh he's back. Oh, he's back. Man. But anyways, he's not Nicholas Cage in all caps. He's Nicholas Cage playing a role that has yeah. maybe some Nicholas Cage elements to it. But I think it could have been played by fucking. It could have been played by Tom Cruise, which you know John, Tom Cruise kind of stole from it when he's like, "I'm gonna kid." What does he say? "I'm gonna." I'm gonna kidnap the prime minister or whatever. Constitution. Oh, oh. He Tom said that. He said that. He said that in the in the the style, the cadence of I'm gonna yeah, steal the Declaration I actually of thought. I actually think that when he says that line, I do think of uh, National Treasure. Yeah. Why? My sister's always saying the Declaration of Independence line because she loves the franchise. Yeah. And she so loves good. Nick Cage. <laughs> okay. I've got a my take is slightly different and it i was gonna bring up the show that jammer just brought up i while it's nice that they're going to do another movie and i think it would be fun if they brought back nicholas cage i think the more interesting thing for me with the franchise is um to see american history from a different perspective mm. and that is what the promise of bringing back national treasure would do and so i'd rather see it through someone else's eyes yeah, that's why I'm interested in the in the series. Like, there's a lot of potential in this franchise to see it from all the different perspectives because throughout history we've been seeing it from one perspective, um, and now it'd be nice to open that up to many different perspectives. I think about it like this is the one thing that sticks to me in, in my mind about that show or that series. Um, I remember the line where Nicolas Cage is reading from the constitution he says no one talks like that anymore and all i can think is yeah these people were fucking hypocrites though right they talked about freedom and they talked about the bill of rights and they talked about all of these things but none of it applied to all the well owning slaves yeah a significant portion of the population and so that is the thing that's always rubbed me the wrong way about that series despite enjoying Mm -hmm. it the thing that i enjoy about it 
has always been the Indiana Jones tropiness of it. But I've also been pushed away by the lack of acknowledgement of just the, the fucking hypocrisy. It's Disney, unless the character is MJ played by Zendaya. They really don't get into it. Anything like that i think i think i don't know that can, i think that's they can true. let it dabble into it though they, at, at the very least yeah i agree go ahead jonesy i'm curious because i'm trying to think here i feel like they've been more brazen about things like that in recent years so you're saying unless so now i have to think of a non character of color that has talked about it because the one that jumps to my mind is um t'challa talking about those mm. kinds of things and equities um i'd have to think about it I'd have to think about it, but I don't know. And I think that that would make it worse, right? I don't know that I think that it has to be a person of color. And if that's the role that they're always assigning a person of color in Disney movies, that's a bad thing. So, and if that's true, Nick, if what you're saying is true, and I'm not saying that it's not, if it is true, that's part of the reason it kind of leads to that previous story, the mm-hmm. inability to have those conversations. Because then people take all those things into sci-fi and fantasy and their preconceived notions and their lack of understanding of history. And we have the problems that we have now. Need more Watchmen's that just review things they don't teach in school. <laughs> like the first fucking scene. And now and then everyone talks about because they're like, what? They never taught me that in school and that's terrible. <laughs> yeah, I remember watching that first scene being like, what the fuck is this? This is like is this like sci-fi? Like, is this like alternate history? And I looked, I was like, oh no, that's real. No, that happens. Truth is, str- truth is stranger than fiction. Most of the time. But, but I guess, you know, Watchmen is alternate history. I, I think I just assumed because Watchmen is generally alternate history. So I assumed it was mm. alternate history. Yeah. Well, it's not really alternate history until you add the soups in. I mean, Watchmen is basically al- alternate present. Yeah, I know. But I think the adding of the soup, soups, as I call them, the original is, what comments, starts, is what starts comics. to change the the timeline like reagan gets elected three times because he won the vietnam war because of a, a soup mm. is that a term they use soup i don't remember no they use that in the boys no, that's in the boys oh, but oh reagan, was, they, <laughs> reagan was not the president at the start of the vietnam war so it's already different yeah yeah but i think part of that was like as we saw in the watchman series um ozymandias i can't remember the his other name yeah. But um, he he makes a good point that he got he's like, you, I was responsible for the elec- election of Robert Redford. Yeah. So those good, so, yeah. good Redfordations. <laughs> I do love that show. It was a good show. Mm-hmm. All right. What are we talking about? National Treasure. You guys ready to move on to uh, talk about some law, talk about some law stuff? Yeah. Uh... I mean, we don't have to. Jesus Christ. It's just really huge news. Yeah, yeah I think we have to. I agree with Joe. I mean, I don't have to do shit to stay black and die. We don't have to do anything. <laughs> <laughs> but we're going to talk about it anyway. We're going to talk about it. So this past week, you may or may not know a friend who was just absorbed, absorbed by the Depp Heard trial. And it has finally come to a close after starting, I think, sometime in April. They've reached a conclusion where there was a libel suit on one side, a defamation suit on the other side. The thing that kind of makes this case interesting to me is that two years ago, this this has been going on for years at this point. You've got the saga, part of it started with the 2018 op-ed in the Washington Post. Then you've got the trial that happened with the son, the libel trial where Johnny Depp was suing them. And then here in the good old US, you had the trial where it was actually heard versus Depp um, in a defamation trial where uh, they sue one another and <laughs> HVD sounds like God, a disease. Injustice. Got. Um, <laughs> and they countersued each other in this trial. I'm sorry. Um, Amber Heard countersued Johnny Depp for hundred million dollars in this defamation trial because her attorney, I'm sorry, his attorney said that this was a hoax. Um, so now it turns out that Depp has been awarded $15 million in total and Amber Heard has won $2 million of that $100 million. How they do for, that? Just do $13 million <laughs> exchange? Uh, no, I didn't. <laughs> Bitcoin, I assume. Mine from Jammer's uh, computers. Um, <laughs> you know, I wouldn't mind so, if they just gave me a fucking kickback of whatever they make. You can spend that on cable. <laughs> Jesus, yeah. 
Get my goddamn ten percent. Um, <laughs> so one of the things that I think is interesting about this trial, again, it, it's the fact that it is it is spread the globe, and the fact that everyone is so fascinated by it. Um, I wanted to know: Were you guys as obsessed with this trial as people around me were? And it's weird. Again, somebody that is into entertainment, me. Uh, someone who's a lawyer, me. I didn't give any fucks. I I, didn't, I, I could not care less. And so I'm just Same. curious, did I, did I miss something here? No. Um, in fact, I was like, I'm surprised he won just because of all we've heard about him longer than her. And my roommate's like, have you been following it at all? Like, do you not know anything about it? And I'm like, I haven't been following it. I like all. the way you said that. I just imagine him as Dumbledore from the Goblet of Fire. Did you put your hand on the Goblet of Fire. Harry? <laughs> <laughs> So Did you put no. your name in it. Do you put your name? <laughs> I have a question. Um, obviously, he's going to get his career back question? in other ways. Yes. Do you think they will put him back in Fantastic Beasts because they saw the no. gross of the last no. one? And like we can say, starring Johnny Depp. No. Be, I know it doesn't no. make any so- sense plot wise, no. and I, no, 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 I think no, no, he did no. a great job. But it's almost like we need to make more that, money this that time. franchise has bigger problems than Johnny Depp. They no, got Ezra the Miller. He doesn't though. Not anymore. He used to sell the tickets. <laughs> he used to sell the tickets. That's true. <laughs> that's true. Um, um, for me, I, you know, I, I would see a headline. I would maybe like have a, a YouTube video pop yeah. up on my feed of somebody who's talking about it. I might watch it for a minute or two. Then I'm like, eh, change it off. Maybe it'll just be, yeah, just part of a news roundup of a new show that I watch. But I wasn't really engaging it. I think that trial is just, it was like, Alien versus Predator. No matter who wins, <laughs> we, we all lose. Whatever that tagline used to be, and not necessarily because any one of them is like the villain or both of them are the villain. Because frankly, I feel we don't fucking know. I'm sorry, I don't. I don't know what happened. I you know maybe they're both horrible. Maybe they're both just really toxic. I don't know. But I'm smart enough to know that I don't know all the facts, and I don't feel like I need to have an opinion about who is good and who is bad in this scenario. So like, I just, it's just, it's something that I just don't feel like we need to be involved in. And it's something that's ultimately, I think, detrimental to rape victims or sexual assault victims, no matter what, you know, no matter how you feel about whether or not Amber Heard uh, was in the right or in the wrong, it's, it is, it's detrimental to sexual assault and rape victims. Because Do you think now, it'll have a, a chilling effect on their, their desire to It report? already has. It already has. I know for a fact it already has. It cut a lot um, of one. I mean, then, not Wonder Woman. A lot of Aquaman footage of her, right? That's unrelated to what they I was said. Just that, yeah, about, they Nick. said that it was so. Oh, sorry, sorry. So yeah, talking, he's talking about victims, but what you're talking about, Nick, is they said that that was a chemist, a chemistry thing. Had no, but I'm just talking about like. Uh, sorry. You know, there's, I know COVID that brain. I know there's a term. There's a term that's going around is like Amber Herding is basically lying oh. about rape. That's your your Amber Herding it or something. It's what just the fuck. It's basically if you if you if you want to come out about somebody who sexually assaulted you, you're already given an extra dose of uh, non believability because of this trial and because of what it has shown, you know, because of how people perceive rape victims. Is rape even involved in this or an accusation or sexual she assault? Said, she said sex assault. Okay, I mean it's still terrible. Just... Yeah. I do. I really did not like or domestic before. violence. Yeah. To be clear. Sorry. I kept using rape and sexual assault, domestic violence. Yeah, is it's fine. I mean, they're all terrible and apply it to what you're talking about. Um, I, uh, I did really was upset on Twitter where before we really knew anything, people were like team dip or like team. No one almost no one was team her, heard, but my roommate does call her Amanda game. turd now. So, you know, what's funny. You know, who is team heard Ezra Miller? And I'm not joking. I'm being serious. He's like, we both like salting people. Isn't that great? I don't remember whether when it, no, it was, happened, it but I do remember. Trial. <laughs> no, no. Yeah, it was before the trial. I'm saying before his yeah. assault. Um, because there are at least three. There were the two that recently happened in Hawaii, but there was one a while ago. Remember mm-hmm. when we were first talking about his assault, I was like, Remember that time he strangled somebody at a bar and it never came up again? Around that time, they asked him about Johnny Depp being in Fantastic Beasts. And he said, we weren't consulted. 
And he just had this air of being irritated about the fact that Johnny Depp was in the movie and he wasn't consulted about it, which I find to be fascinating. But yeah, he's the like point. the most important part of that franchise is Ezra Miller. I mean, not even I never go to him for a say at all. Well, and it's not even just about the importance. It's, it's, for me, it goes back to the hypocrisy. Yeah. Right? So I'm sorry, Jamra, I took you off topic. I mean, I, I made my point. I just think it's detrimental to domestic violence and sexual assault victims, this whole thing, having it. I feel like it's just setting that, you know, in tandem with things like, you know, political stuff that's happening, having to do with, you know, things are just, it's, a, it's like a stew of just setting so victims' rights back. Based off of what you said, though, what is the alternative? Don't televise it. So you it. said, don't televise it. I think, I'm not sure. I can't tell which would be better because let's say this goes behind closed. And I'm not saying there's no good alternative. I'm saying also there's just, it's just shitty. Okay. Like, I don't, I don't know if there has to be like, it's, it's, sh- it's shitty that it's happened. It's shitty that it's got this much exposure and it's shitty that people follow it as much. It's shitty that it's made a huge impact in terms of pop culture to the point where it has that effect. But I don't know if there's an alternative. Yeah. I think the alternative so is what I, up and Amber Heard get your shit together and just deal with it yourselves. Well, here's but. what I think I understand about why some people are upset about it. And this isn't to the mayors of the case. I don't think, I think the reaction that Warner brothers had is what caused some people to, to, to Nick's point be team Depp. If they did not believe what she said occurred, I think that Warner Brothers' reaction and asking him to resign from Fantastic Beast is part of what caused a lot of this negative reaction, right? And the other part of that is, and as some of the evidence came out in this trial, um, it looked real bad for her. It did look bad. And yet they um, didn't let her go. The same company from... Uh... Aquaman right. too, from Aquaman or Aquaman, which I think yeah. pissed off a lot of fans. So they're like, "Why is Johnny getting punished?" I don't even lot, mean that, that was before a lot of that came out. Yeah, there's that, and unfortunately, that is part and parcel with every every domestic violence, sex assault case that I've seen. The person that reports is generally not the one that has any of that happen to them. Unfortunately, um, so I'm sorry. What do you mean? The person that reports what? The Usually person that not reports, guilty of it too. Yeah. If it if it looks like there is some sort of cross um cross assault or something of na- of that nature, it almost always seems that it is the person that reports first that is the one that is um not they almost never get in trouble for it. Uh, it I don't usually is the man too. Usually. I said everyone that I've been involved Usually. in. Okay. Mm. Gotcha. All right. Yeah. Cause I know I've seen, there's all sorts of other cases where it's the exact opposite, where it's like nothing happens to the person who's being reported on. And then the other person essentially loses, it gets ridiculed constantly for reporting. Yeah. No, by the time it gets to me and Got by it. the time it gets to me, it's going to some sort of, some sort of adjudication, whether it be administrative or trial. Interesting. So, um, yeah, I thought it was an interesting. I, what I read after the fact sounded interesting, but the the social attraction to it generally which is just it's fascinating. Gross. Yeah, people, I saw something. Where, it's it's like going back to Britney Spears and freaking <coughs> South Park, where people just like to see stars fall. Yeah. Yeah, and, and people like, like people like to people like to take sides. People like to like when it says team depth. People just like to take teams, yeah. take sides for no reason. It's like this isn't a fucking Warriors game. This is these are people's lives, and this is, has bigger ramifications. It's it's not like a fucking oh, something good. Sit say, down and watch like, popcorn. This isn't Twilight. This is Twilight. This is not team Twilight. Eric, team Jacob. It was always that or Eric. Uh, it was an Eric. <laughs> uh, Edward, 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 Edward. My sister was so into it at that age, you know, that they made their t-shirts to go see oh, at God, least the first funny. one. Wow. And now wow. she just owns those movies completely. Now, it's like, what movies? Hopefully you took pictures. 
You're like, no, no, this one, the one we were in a t-shirt for. I'm sure they exist and are probably posted by herself on social media somewhere. So, but um, yeah, it's just, it's really gross that people are like so into this. It's like, why? Why? Comics just need to start. TV shows just need to start another civil war for movies where you're like team cap or team Iron Man. That's when the world was healthier. Yeah, right. Not like. Yeah, anyway. Wait, didn't that movie come out in 2016? <laughs> yeah. So you're wrong. Thanos was right. <laughs> oh, God, I forgot about that. <laughs> it's like 2016. What are you talking about? I think like, what happened in 2016, Jonesy? Tell me what happened. It was, uh, I just remember that was, um, I, that was part of my Twitter profile and probably is still part of my Facebook profile. Just team cap. Like I kept it for years and years. I feel like you missed the undertones of what was being said. I'm not sure if you did, but I feel like you did. Well, Brexit oh. and Trump, if we're talking about 2016. Okay. Just making sure. Just making sure. I just, you got to escape into trust, the Marvel. Trust verify. You got to verify with Nick. That's, that's always the rule. <laughs> That's always the rule. Are we you guys good? ready to move? Yes. I think we're good. You guys ready to move on? Mm-hmm. All right. We're, I wanted to talk about a book, but Jammer, you're yawning. So do you actually want to talk about a book or do you want to do Who Watches? I'm down to talk about a book. I don't know what book we're talking about, but I'm down. What? QT's book. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Let's talk about that. <laughs> QT's book. It's funny because you're like, we're talking about a book. I'm like, which snow story was a book? And I was like, are we talking about the Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes? I totally forgot. Yeah, that's, that's true. Oh, damn it. Kyle reminded me that. I totally forgot to talk about a thing. Um, I'll talk about it now. Top Gun is fucking killing at the box office. It was too close to gun, so it switched to missiles. Weren't you supposed to everything start out of with that? Water. Weren't yeah. you supposed to start no. with that? You know what? Kyle's <laughs> like, you motherfuckers. <laughs> I'm no, sleepy. very calm. <laughs> I'm sleepy. COVID brain. Take Just... a test after this. Oh, no. Oh no. You guys in your internet. You. We can't hear Kyle. you, Kyle. Doing oh, fun. Crap, sorry. I didn't I guess I didn't hit the button. Uh hit the button enough. Anyways, I was making a joke that he's he's frozen. He's in he's in punishment for for not following the no, I'm joking. I don't know. <laughs> not following. Kyle sent a little program. EMP over the internet. <laughs> 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 Never started with Top Gun though, oh. FYI. Uh so yeah, so I mean I think the, the big thing has to do with Top Gun, and as we know, it was a big hit with us here on the podcast last week. It was like A, A minus, A minus, A, all across the board. Pretty well, solid. I, I threw numbers. a plus in there. I oh, oh sorry, we A lost plus. Him completely. Now keep going, Jam- Jammer. Sorry, sir. So the movie uh, made quite a bit of money. It had an opening of one hundred twenty-six million dollars, one hundred twenty-six point seven million dollars in its opening weekend domestically. Currently has made three hundred and thirty million dollars, three hundred thirty million point six dollars uh, worldwide. And as Jonesy pointed out, and it was pointed out in another article, that this is actually Tom Cruise's first movie to gross over a hundred million dollars in an opening weekend, which is shocking. 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 He's one of the biggest movie stars in the world. Yeah, crazy. Like, what was the closest that he got to? I War, bet you he was hoping oh. the Mummy would do it, right? Yeah, the mummy, War of the like, Worlds. That's gonna be the one. War of the Worlds is number two, but even then, like, not over a hundred million for that Minority Report. Would Spielberg and Tom Cruise's names are both on like the? And I'm sure Fallout. But didn't Spielberg do War five. of the Worlds as well? That's what I'm saying. War of yeah. the Worlds and Minority Report. You had Spielberg's okay. name on it and Tom Cruise's name on it. But those yeah. were kind of I don't know. I, back in the World day, the movies weird. Inc- that was like yeah, 2005. I feel like it, they weren't making you know 100 million plus. Like I remember when okay, Iron Man came out, it made like 80 something million dollars. Everyone's like, oh my god, <laughs> it's like a huge deal back then. Um, so it, we were living in a different world. You know, we were living in a world where the the whole landscape was was freaking permeated with sex comedies and stuff. And it was like, those were the big movies that when, you know, you freaking had super bad coming got out. Got a motorboat, there. got a motorboat, baby. Yeah, it was, uh, what he got up, no. super bad. Yeah. Yeah. I remember. Or your old virgin. I remember. Yeah. You were the virgin. I remember. Yeah, I was there. I, I lived it. I remember. <laughs> I lived it. I'm just honestly shocked that as much with as much money and their paramounts putting in 
to like Top Gun and Mission Impossible. It's interesting that neither of the like to- Mission Impossible is never open to 100 million, which I find the most. What was the last one? The last one, Rogue Nation, right? Wait, no. But yeah, the no, Mission no. Impossible. Fallout. Fallout. That's Fallout. It. But Mission Impossible has good legs. This is why they make a lot of money. Like, you know, something like Doctor Strange dropped like higher than Spider Man 3 dropped first weekend to second weekend. And uh, it, Mission Impossible is one of those movies. It's not like everywhere everything everywhere all at once where it grows box office but it stays pretty especially since the main audience is like 40 year olds still at this point so (laughs) they don't feel the need most 40 year olds to rush out and see mission impossible opening night that's something well what's funny well what's funny about that is that was one of the biggest demographics that came out for top gun so Mm -hmm. it's all those people Mm -hmm. that were kids when this first one came when the first one came out or you know there are a few younger people but apparently the people who are COVID averse who are about that age were like, nah, I'm going to see this shit. Um, and with mm-hmm. an, I don't know if you said the, uh, the cinema score, did you jammer? Did not. No, it was a, a plus. plus a plus. Yeah. It's a crowd pleasing movie, like super hardcore cloud priest cloud crowd pleaser. Like you a, go in, did you say cloud cloud pleaser? I mean, it is right. Cloud <laughs> pleaser. <laughs> up in the sky. <laughs> you know, it blows my mind. Ghost protocol. Yeah, that movie made twelve point seven million dollars its opening weekend, and it mm. led to a sequel. <laughs> well, it ultimately grossed six hundred ninety four. Oh yeah, I got it. I'm like twelve point <laughs> seven million dollars its opening weekend. That's crazy. With That's COVID crazy. brain, I'm like, it only made Minuscule. twelve million in its lifetime run. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Um, but yeah, uh, producer Kyle's there saying Doctor Strange two and New Hope, or excuse me, No Way Home. Had the same sixty-seven percent drop. Oh, then that's less Hope. than uh, uh, Spider-Man Three had like seventy-three or seventy-five percent, which was pretty unheard of, especially since the first two Spider-Man films had legs. It's because it sucked. Yeah, and people were like, "This movie sucks." Bad word of mouth, which is the opposite of Top Gun. I imagine it to hold on to. Wait, which movie sucked? Spider-Man Three. Spider-Man Three. Raimi. I enjoy it, but it's not good. Oh, Raimi Three. Yeah. Yeah, Raimi Three. Yeah. What? Raimi three? They're they're both Ray, Raimi three. No, wait, that's no, wait, no, sorry. sorry. My <laughs> bad. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> <Kyle. laughs> Kyle's like, oh fuck, I'm so embarrassed right now. <laughs> I have I have brain I have brain damage, so I, I get an I get a free excuse. That's fair. I thought you were just gonna say I too have COVID brain. <laughs> yeah, I too have COVID brain. <laughs> so yeah, I mean, yeah, pretty good. Good for you, Tom Cruise. You did it. You did it, baby. Hundred million dollar club, finally. It only took your whole career. Seriously. I mean, to be clear, hundred million dollar club opening weekend. Yeah. Uh huh. That's what we've been talking about. I know that, but you know, I feel like hundred million dollar club is like you gross a hundred million dollars. No, no, and you don't get a sequel unless you're cheap. Unless you're like you know Napoleon Dynamite made like five hundred thousand dollar movie and then made like sixty million dollars. So I was. Movie. 500 000. oh that makes sense i thought i said fifty thousand at first like, they spent that much in the book anyway it doesn't matter I I spent spent, yeah i still can't believe spent five hundred thousand dollars permits costumes come on film it was probably shot on actual film back then that cost oh, yeah. money speaking of film actual film that costs money quentin tarantino what? he's writing a book it's almost not exactly what i'm saying he likes film so it still counts Quentin Tarantino is writing a book. He has a book that's coming out uh, October 25th, and it is going to be like a, it's going to be a criticism. It's called Cinema Speculation. So this is coming from Harper Collins, and it is going to be um, him having a conversation about, you know, movie criticisms, the things that have happened. And this is really a book for cinephiles. So this is really kind of a jammer thing, right? The hoity-toity movie bullshit that apparently, apparently. he loves, that he loves. Um Sorry, do you, we have a are fourth you, guest. I feel like I'm the most lowbrow person on this goddamn podcast. I don't understand where this, this came from. Are you? Me? You're more lowbrow than me? That's a fair one. That was a good point. Yeah, I was like, <laughs> I don't know what I was I'm right there. here, Jammer. I'm sorry. I forgot about you. Oh. I feel like that makes it worse. <laughs> it does make it worse. <laughs> I'm looking at you, but I forgot you were here. Carry yeah. on. Um, so, uh, I guess I was going to start with Jammer and the question I had uh, about this book is, so you read Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. I did. Right? All right. Are you more interested in his thoughts and opinions on Hollywood from a nonfiction perspective or 
do you prefer the you're already nodding go ahead yes uh his book <laughs> is weird his, his fiction is weird it's written it's it's just written really weird the 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 perspective is all wonky just like the hopping around doesn't make any sense and it's just and maybe this is a situation where it's like I'm used to books reading a certain way and he's too outside of my realm of what that is for me to really fully appreciate it. But it feels less like he's doing it intentionally and more that just like, that's just, he doesn't know any better. Um, it, it's not written particularly well either. The descriptions are just kind of like, eh, they fall flat. It's just, it's really weird. Um, it's, but at the same time, it's, it's a weird in the most annoying way possible where it's engaging enough to keep me want to keep reading, but I'm not really necessarily enjoying myself most of the time. Um, I don't know if there's a, what I think a lot of the, my biggest problem with the book is that there's a lot of telling and not showing to where he just tells us explicitly, this person is feeling this way. This person is feeling this way because of this thing. And this thing is this thing and this thing. I'm like, <coughs> well, that's just lazy writing. Come on. I hate that term, by the way. Lazy writing. Lazy writing? It's just a Deadpool lazy joke. Writing. That's the only reason no, I no, say it. No, no, no. I don't think it's a Deadpool joke. The people use it, they go like, oh, there's it's such lazy writing. I'm like, fuck off. You don't know what lazy writing no, is. No, I mean, You're but like, saying what is lazy writing? Good. I was like, when. I don't uh, think, I think lazy writing is a shortcut term to just invalidate anything that you don't like. You just call it lazy writing indefensible. I still think, like, I say that all the time, but it's just because Deadpool said it. I don't mean it. Where he looks I know at the camera that. and he's like, well, that's I, just lazy writing. But I saying, feel like saying it as a joke is one thing, but saying it and like seriously, like, oh, like they when they look at freaking, I don't know, something but isn't anything writing. a shorthand for something else. Like if I called you a prick, like it would be the sum of all my experiences with you. But that doesn't <laughs> somehow invalidate. Like you could ask I, me you why. Know, you could ask me why am I a prick? So and here's like, oh, my I problem. Can, let me articulate it. why I think you're here's a prick. my yeah yeah you're right. They, I think it's they should say if they fall and say here is why. And then they talk about why it's lazy writing. Okay. But if they say it's lazy writing, that. that's it. That. You only got 140 you're characters asking, you're or 280 characters. For, yeah, you're asking for an essay. It depends on who the audience yes. is. It depends on like what setting it is. So it, who you're talking about, where you are, what you're doing, how much you've had to drink. <laughs> I just, I think that if you, I think everything that we say in that is a shorthand for something else. It's like I the get conversations it. that we have on here. Nick will say a thing. And when you're like, Nick, why did you say that? And when he can't say it, then that's what you're talking about now. But those words yes. would otherwise mean something if someone else said them. Maybe, maybe they would, or maybe, Christ, they just, maybe they're just saying it because it's easy to talk about. It's easy to say, it's easy to cast. I don't like it. Lazy writing. I, I, I throw the proverbial tomato at your face. And if it sticks, great. You know, I don't have to defend myself because if other people agree with me, lazy writing, boom, lazy writing. Kyle. <laughs> Kyle put in the chat, the last chat I had lazy writing. Get out of here. I did not think again, that was that movie's Again, problems. while Rise of Skywalker is over there just shitting itself in the corner. Just, that gets a pass. Okay. Let's see, and I know we're in different Fuck like, the Rise Twitter of Skywalker. circles. That was trash. Yeah, that was garbage. I know we're in All different the lazy writing. Twitter spaces, Jammer, where you follow probably a lot more authors and people commentate <laughs> on books more. No, by me, but like, are you, are you fighting all the boys? Because I've never, I've, 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 I've never said someone tweet that's lazy writing. Oh, <laughs> that I was have. my point. I've but like, because you're I've you're looking at a well, you're fo- like you're more in the author or book sphere of Twitter. Nothing like that pops up on my sphere because I'm not talking I about people writing. Say fighting words. People those, say it a lot those, about movies. Those feel like they have to be a uh, fighting words, right? Like if another author said to another author, like, hey, those are fu- those. I'm talking about writing. if he's looking no, at no, no. his favorite offers and they're down on the, just a random person comment comments below it. Like that's lazy writing. Oh, subtweeting. Like, oh, man. So, yeah. It's lazy Don't writing. look at people's comments. But anyway, like so my golf, point, is that a golf slap point, to authors? I'm, I'm not a huge. I'm not a huge fan of Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, the book. It also uh whew, it really when you get inside the head of someone like cliff booth cliff. he is a he is a reprehensible human being in the book whereas in the movie you're just like oh i kind of like him he's kind of likable in the book mm-mm, he's a piece of shit he's awful yeah see and, you realize that you like him because he's a prick <laughs> maybe um but anyways i i am more interested to see what he does uh with the video what was it called no oh, i'm looking at the wrong thing whatever the book is called in addition podcast. to the podcast which is also recently announced that he's doing with roger avery um who he co-wrote who that he co-wrote pulp fiction with him oh, mm. an old friend 
Yeah. And apparently also, I think Roger Avery is also a controversial person. I think he's, I think he was convicted of murder or something. That is a controversial so is person. He, is he the real life Cliff? <laughs> he based Cliff on him. Oh God. What so, were the circumstances under which this murder? So is this being I, done like one of them's in Zoom on prison? And one of no, them's no, in he's, I, think he, <laughs> I think he did his time. Okay, excuse me. Not murder. Manslaughter charge. Oh. Completely different. He was arrested under suspicion of manslaughter and DUI following a car crash. Well, actively in killing someone on purpose versus doing it by accident. I think it's a huge difference. Only in your Personally, mind. I mean, it's, in, it's all about intent. If I accidentally but hit that's someone what I said. in a car. Oh, in your mind. Only in your mind. The intent. I, I mean, <laughs> and the law. There's it's a illegal. big difference between it's accidentally illegal. No, no. Not in your mind. The mind of the person. It's, a, it's an intent joke. The difference is only your intent. It's only in your mind. And you're dead. Okay. So he was sentenced to one year. Jesus Christ. In fucking comedy Iowa. goal. Sorry, I was too busy paying attention to hear. I'm too stupid. Yeah, so we'll, I'll have to listen back and hear what that joke was because I have no idea what it was. Um, anyway, so the manslaughter charge. Charge. Okay, so not a conviction. Uh, I would probably have to dig deeper, but at the very least, there was a charge, I okay. will say. Uh, anyways, I'm interested to see what that brings about, but I think what I'm really interested more than anything is it seems like this seems to be a potential confirmation that he's just not going to make another movie. I think this is it. He's segueing on. He's segueing out. He, he's on his way out. He made Hollywood. He's like, oh, I wrote a book about Hollywood. Oh, I'll write another book. Oh, I'll do a podcast. I'm like, ooh, I think we're seeing. I think we're seeing the new present Tarantino, and I think the old filmmaker Tarantino is going away. I was going to say something. He's George to my dog, to my cat, not to you. No, I just don't think he's gonna. I, I think he's done. I think he's not long. He's no making moves anymore. He's done. What about I was gonna well, say what about ten? Some, yeah, I was gonna say he something never, several. He I never guaranteed ten. He said no more than ten. I think I've he's had, stalling. I've seen him say that. I've seen him say that. He said not only that. He says in order for him, his his rule is that he has to be in production by the time he's sixty. I'll just, and if he does it, then it's a ninth movie. Well, that's what I was gonna like, say. Then, I think he's stalling. So that his like he's like yeah it's coming. There's I mean he's not saying that, but he's like I said I would hopefully do 10 movies but no more so i think right now he's stalling by writing books so that he can like <laughs> save that movie and be like hey here's my last movie i don't think so i think he's done i think he's 59 by the way no oh yeah he's done he's done but uh, yeah I, he can also break his own rules but i don't I, but i think he's done interesting sound like the joker how tonight you're gonna break your one rule oh <laughs> the fuck the joker says it However, the Joker says it. You guys ready to move on? Yeah. Sure. All right. We can shut it down and we can do who watches. What do you want to do? I think we're talking some Obi Wan. Obi Wan. You're not even even caught up on Obi Wan. We could talk about two episodes. That's true. That's boring. Sure. Let's go. Talk about third episode. I don't care about spoilers. Okay, let's go. Um, So, Obi Wan is currently on the third episode. We've already talked about the racist shit being hurled at Moses Ingram and I'm enjoying it so far. There's a lot of, let's say dissension. Uh, people agree and disagree within the discord chat. So if you have thoughts and opinions about Obi-Wan, why don't you jump in there? Let's yeah, yeah. know what you think. Um, it, it seems like a lot of it has to do with how much this show should be allowed to stretch canon. Also running which you've heard about at the top of this episode. <laughs> yeah. Um, now I just run like this. Yeah. Tom yeah. I find <laughs> myself run. to be one of those people where. Oh, the suspense is, is less important oh, okay. to me than whether or not I'm entertained. Huh? We, we sorry. You, 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 you froze. You froze for like 10 seconds, but you're good. Continue. We, we heard, heard you the you whole said. time. So. We heard you. Yeah. God damn it. Yeah. Uh, Canon is less important than entertainment. And I agree. thus far, I'm entertained by what I'm seeing. And Kyle's dying. <laughs> killing and Kyle. I'm really curious. I feel like I need to give this show enough room to tell the story that it's trying to tell before I judge it against the backdrop of everything else. Like, how does this fit in the fabric of the rest of the prequel trilogy and the uh, original series? And that's ultimately how I'll judge it, not not minute to minute versus the other stuff. 
It's fair. Yeah, I, I think uh, I'm overall enjoying it fairly well. I think it's fun. I think, and this might be a stupid thing to say, but I'm going to say it anyway. I think it's okay if something is just fine and entertaining. It doesn't have to be completely revelatory. Every single thing doesn't have to be revelatory in order to be enjoyable. And I think that's kind of where this falls. It's like, it has lots of like problems. We talked about the children running. I think it very much looks like a TV show on a budget. It looks, it doesn't look like it's feature length in terms of how, uh, in terms of its quality, like in filmmaking and whatnot. Um, I think it has some positives too. You know, you have Obi-Wan himself. I think I love seeing you McGregor back on the screen. Um, I like some of the stuff that it adds to the canon involving uh, Leia. I just, I think it's fun and cute. But then also on the other side of things, I'm going back to negative here again. Uh, pendulum. Pend- I'm a pendulum here. So as far as negatives go, it is, and this is a problem I think that extends to all of the TV shows on Disney Plus from Mar- uh, Disney, uh, Star Wars. From Star Wars is that, they're just stretched so thin. Um, I feel like each scene accomplishes exactly one thing for the for the story and mm. nothing more. Whereas if you look at the movies, each scene does multiple things. It's really efficient in its storytelling. And in these Star Wars shows, we're just sacrificing efficiency in storytelling just to get it to six episodes or eight episodes or nine episodes. I think it's a problem I had with Mandalorian. It's a problem I had with Boba Fett, even though I enjoyed that as well. And it's a problem I'm having with here where it just feels like everything is stretched out because we just have to have a scene that accomplishes one thing rather than try to kind of have layers of efficiency and storytelling with each scene. And I just feel like it's a, I think it's also a big problem in terms of TV in general these days where there's a lot of just stretching things out and having one thing happen each scene. And uh, I think it's a victim of that too. But overall, I think it's fun. I like that the cyberpunk world whatever it looks it reminds me of the star wars underworld never made tv show that george lucas tried to the produce test footage the test footage oh, i thought that was whoa we lost jonesy immediately jonesy's that time gone jonesy's gone i thought that was super good like i like that we spent a lot of time there i did feel like there was filmmaking uh you know issues it's like you know the parkour was very floaty it just like i said a lot of things just felt like a tv budget but at the same time I'm saying all those bad things about it, but I'm enjoying it fairly well and I'll keep watching it. It's fine. I'll, I'll say similar things. Um, the canon, one part of canon does bother me a little more because it's like a big dent in it Which with part? Princess Leia being kidnapped. And like the only way she knows Obi-Wan in the original movie is you served with my father in the Clone Wars, not you fucking saved my life what, 10 you years know, she, ago when I remember it. Thing, I agree. Logically speaking, she should have mentioned that, but also... It, it's That's not way completely. more important than saying you served with my father. It's like, you remember when you saved my life 10 years ago? I need your help again. <laughs> uh, You're my yeah. only hope again. <laughs> Unless you get it's, it's, brain wiped or something like the droids. I see your point and I agree. It's, it's more logical if you were to say that. But at the same time, you could still argue. Yeah, well, still. I just think it's more important to mention like she saved Does my she life also, and we actually get we got question. along forever. Does she, she you were my friend. She doesn't know his name oh. is Obi Wan yet. She knows it's Ben, but she's heard other people call him Obi Wan, hasn't she? Maybe not. Maybe it's just been Ben. Yeah, that's it's a good possible. point. That's a very good point. But I'm she not sure 10, if it's you know. She is 10, 10 years old. Has seen his seen his face. Spent time with him. Saw a wanted poster that may have actually had had his name. And in the safe, may have. and in the safe room, the lady Ta- Tala said the name, not whispered, not mm-hmm. quiet. Said her said Kenobi's name out loud. Leia five feet away not to mention why the hell is she using the force i'm done kids are stupid she i don't even remember force. her when using she the, use force? the force was her all of her into all of her intuition of of like oh cousin this is how how you are everything she says about kenobi and this that's her using the force guys oh so? was it i yeah. thought it was her yes. just being no, intuitive and no. being especially like there's, the wait, wait, what do you there's, thing. there's a huge because there's, there's a huge difference between being intuitive ba- based off of what you've seen your your cousin's behavior being and then telling obi-wan kenobi his deepest darkest knowing. feelings she's using the force and also there's things did she in tell ep- him his deepest darkest yes feelings? she yeah. absolutely was did. that in episode in three episode, no episode two 
She's like, you're afraid you're hiding something, yada, 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 yada. And he's given no in- inclinations of, of that. She just whatsoever. said you're hiding whatsoever. something. She's just, yeah. oh my God. I disagree Jammer. with you on this one. Okay, Kyle. well, do, do, you want me to spoil, do you want me to spoil things for, for you? No. <laughs> okay, sure, then just keep, keep watching. You said you didn't care about episode three. Yeah, I mean, go for it. No, I, that, that, it goes it goes beyond <laughs> that. It goes beyond that. It goes oh, beyond stuff three, you know. So, anyway, is there actual evidence, tangible evidence, other than inferences? Just, just keep, later. Keep watching the se- series, Jam. So far, I just figured she was very like in touch emotionally, where she's you know to a point where she's like he didn't even say thank you to the droid like in like the first episode or like when she wants to talk to the droid this episode, and it's like oh that droid's not allowed to talk, like he's not programmed to talk. So, right. but yeah, I'm enjoying it overall. I would say I'm enjoying it more than um, Boba Fett, but much less than The Mandalorian. I mean, did Boba you play Fett video games? Oh, Wait, did you play video games know. while you're watching those? <laughs> no, I did during Boba but... Fett. Mandalorians and like the boys are like a full attention. Mandalorian and Stranger is a Things full attention show. That's that baffles me because Mandalorian is just so simplistic in its storytelling. And it's like a quest. It's a quest show, at least in the first season. No, in the second season, which is like, yeah. I got to do this for someone. <laughs> I got to find it's, Grogu's home. It's it's an open world uh, role playing game. Yeah. yeah. Okay. What do you think? Go ahead. What do I think about? Nah, that's <coughs> um, I think I've already said I'm really enjoying it. Um, there are things that I find interesting, but also kind of. Uh, I don't want to say baffling. I'm curious what they're doing with it. So I like getting to see Vader's brutality on for like just full on, like You're he's just burn snapping necks. Yeah. No, even before that, um, he's walking oh, through yeah. the streets, snapping necks just to draw out Obi Wan. Oh Lord, you get to see no. just oh, the, we're here. the vindictive, just vengeance of. Um, him doing that, like dragging him through the fire. Uh, I am curious though, why he couldn't snatch the robot and Obi-Wan through the fire. Um, that's I mean, I'm curious about, I'm curious about a lot of those types of things. Like, sure. I can understand Obi-Wan being out of practice with things, but he's really weak. And I'm like, I guess if you don't work out for 10 years, but he works in like a factory, some of the stuff he can do. I feel like he's been trying to crush that side of himself um, like intentionally. He, really wants, he wants to train Luke, but at the same time, he's like, that's what got me in trouble last time. <laughs> like I've left the Jedi. I just don't want to be spotted. So I'm not, you know, I'm not practicing or I've been squashing that side of myself because I don't okay. want to get into the shit again. Yeah, yeah I, I do th- think I it should think be coming his, back quicker. I think his force... I think his lightsaber um, fighting, and this is without reading a bunch of EU stuff to be able to back up this. I imagine a lot of it comes from the force Mm -hmm. and his inability or almost inability to save Leia when she falls spoilers for Obi-Wan up to these, up to the third Um, second one kind of puts that on. No, no, but just like, I'm going to keep talking. Um, kind of goes into what we get to see in the third one where he is fighting Darth Vader. Um, and so I think that, that that would be my rationale. And that's kind of the frustrating thing. It's it's frustrating only because I have to be patient. I have to get to the end of this to see like, okay, what is the reason why this is happening? Is it because he is just not in tune with the force anymore? Um, or is it just lazy writing? Um, <laughs> I, do you think... Yeah, and I'll just you just have to wait and see. And I'm yeah. not accustomed to that anymore. Is because you're able to like binge things and now you can't, you have to wait. Yeah, or I've read whatever it is and I understand like this is this is just different. Um and we don't they could almost make up whatever re- not whatever reason they want. We have no idea what direction it's going to go. Even even though we know ultimately what happens to Obi Wan, yeah. Can I also talk about? I feel like Joel Edgerton is just like the best actor in the show right now. Perfect. I noticed so someone said that he changed his voice to actually sound like the older Owen. Oh, did like he? Someone, com- yeah. someone commented no, that I, I changed his accent. I'm like, that was actually pretty. I cool. did. 
I was like, yeah, it's amazing that he's sound like he's just doing the voice. I did, I did notice he did the Luke kind of Luke that he does yeah. in A New Hope. He did that same kind of feel to it. I know that. Like part. when he said the way you trained his father, like that was very voice, much, that tone was yeah. just like original trilogy. Fucking Joel Edgerton, man. It's he's good, so good. Really good. You guys ever watch Warrior? Yes. No. Warriors. So With him good. and Tom Hardy? Yeah. Yes. It's really good. That, and of course, The Gift. He's fantastic in The Gift, too. I actually just want to see that one. Oh, yeah. Is a stalker? Wait. Uh, I think I, I don't thought The Gift her. was one where they press the button on the box or whatever. Yeah, I thought The I Gift don't was know. the button. No, it's the one where he plays a stalker. Oh, yeah. Like with Dennis Quaid, I think, and his wife. I think Dennis Quaid is the guy who bought the house. Maybe. And he's like, like uh, just No, it's, uh, what's his name? From the Hogan family. Um isn't it Jason Bateman? Oh, yeah, Jason from Bateman. the Hogan family. Jason Bateman and yeah. Rebecca Hall. Yeah, I do nice. remember that movie vaguely. He directed that movie too. Very good. It's so yeah. weird that my brain no, no, keeps no, no, going no, no. back to the Hogan uh, family. Oh, like, oh, interesting. I need a better reference for Jason Bateman and the Hogan family. Rest of Elmer. Michael Bluth. Mm, I, fucking I mean, Ozark. I watch yeah, the Hogan but, family. That's who he always is to me. Rachel McAdams' husband. You said you needed, you said you needed a better night. reference point. I gave you one, and you rejected it. Yeah, yeah. What did I like watch and enjoy, and like could readily remember? Game night. Arrested Development is not one of them. Game night. I love Game Night's night. one of his Still best movies. It. Oh man, it's a Still really good it, yeah. comedy. Like it's tightly funny. scripted and like character it's arcs fun. for everyone. Even like everyone on the game night. I'm gonna watch it. I he, keep he wanting to watch Fox it. And every time it comes up. He is. I love you know that what? role. There we go. Zootopia is a good, good reference. Zootopia is going to be it. Speaking of which, I saw the bad guys, not with him. Um, oh, was that good? It was pretty. It is. It's very cute. Because it looked like it looked like it was cool, and I appreciated its visual style, but I haven't had a chance to see it yet. I think it's fun. Um, what was annoying is now that my son can read, like he's read the book, and so as we're watching the movie, he's like trying to tell us what's going to happen. I'm like, shut the fuck up. Is he wrong a lot too? Because how they shake up stuff. Because at uh, a certain age, I like yeah. stopped reading the books first. Like Lord of the Rings, I read the books, so, and I'm like, "Where's Tom Bombadil? Like, what the fuck is oh going?" Oh God! <laughs> Even the there extended cut—they don't have happened. Tom Bombadil, do they? <laughs> there was one thing that happened, and he was like, "It's gonna be this," and then it wasn't. I was like, "So can you stop now?" <laughs> <laughs> He's like, "Covid laugh." Jenny. <laughs> Covid <laughs> laugh. Got the TB laugh. Sounds like TB. Got the consumption. Yeah. Longer. That's what you start calling. Longer. <laughs> God damn it. Oh, God. That's awful. Watch, I'm going to go watch Tombstone. It's a great movie. Longer. Anyway. So speaking of, are you finished? Are you guys finished, Obi Wan? I don't want to do a segue. If we're um, not done. Oh, we're segueing? I thought we were done. No, I was going to segue to, uh, to a very, very, very short review that you could watch all and binge watch, unlike Obi Wan Kenobi. Stranger Things wanna, 4. Wanna, uh, I'm going to give sure. a very short, uh, not a single spoiler review. Let's hear it. it. I like seasons two and three, but it does make them feel like filler. Like we've always oh, been like okay. there is character development. That's important. They add new characters that are important. Like, you know, Brett Gailman and like they had to get Russia to uh, they had to find a way to work the Russians in and send him off to Russia. But um, this feels like a lot of the meat that even answers questions I didn't even have questions about. Like it's very much like like going, how did he get his name? How did Hopper get his name? No, it's not like that. It's it's a lot blaster. of upside down at eleven stuff that they uh really go into. And you cannot avoid the opening scene because they flash back to it like a thousand times. The one that you get the warning about following up on our story last week. No, very mm-hmm. good. Um possibly better so than the first but i always have trouble like calling a later movie better than the first because the first is what got it going and it's so classic but really really good especially if, if you've been kind of lukewarm on season two and three that was like, me this feels like the last act even though we know they're getting another season but so i just imagine hopper going up to the freaking guy at you know the at the border and him being like who are your people and he's just be like rabbits i have a i have a pet rabbit he's like jim hopper <laughs> no it doesn't do is that what happens in russia on his way back to the u.s no, no comment no comments 
<laughs> no spoilers. Still two episodes left, four hours worth of con- Zack Snyder amount of content. Are More you even finished Zack it? Snyder? I no, no, the, the second the second part of the season, uh, which is oh. two episodes, and I think one of them is two and a half hours long. Am I right about that? Well, the first it's one's like an hour and a half long. The, the, it's, yeah, it's less than 30 days now. Um, the first one is uh, an hour and a half, or the eighth one, and the ninth one is two hours and 30 minutes. Wow. It's crazy. That's so cool. Even though they released so seven wait, now. I should just re- wait a month. I guess. I, I don't... My roommate, was, don't my wait, roommate don't loved wait it. Wait a month. So watch one loved, or two episodes a week. Like, why? Well, yeah, watch one a week. Like, it's the way it's supposed to be done. Put but my roommate jammer. liked it so much, but then he was so pissed because obviously it's a cliffhangers. There's another, it's, the season isn't over. And he was so upset that the story didn't continue. And I was like, dude, it was always meant to be this way and it's meant to get more buzz. Because I do feel like it's getting a lot more buzz for longer. We'll see if it's for I longer still think or they not than other Netflix weekly. shows. I agree, but that I don't think Netflix will do that for a while unless it's like, great. They've been doing that with the circle I, and like the great yeah. baking show. But I think that the way that everyone else has done it is better. So like Pachinko on Apple TV, they released the first three episodes and then the rest weekly. Um, the boys today were you a lot of the Hulu shows. Yeah. Everything that's doing like, hey, you want two to three hours of content? Here you go. Um, and then Even you just, you're able to watch the rest. Which I thought was really I important with Obi-Wan. I'm really curious if with Obi-Wan that had to do with the delay or was that what they always intended to do? Um, there's a part of me that thinks that they, they did it because of the delay. And so it was like, good guy, Obi-Wan. Good job. Cool. We'll well, that's see. all I had to say about strange <laughs> things without getting it. To, I loved it. That's all. I love a lot of stuff, but I particularly love this like Top Gun. How can we tell? That's how you can tell. Why? So Kyle, just, Kyle just mentioned here, and I think I agree. Um, I think the delay was only because they realized, oh shit, we need to have it for celebration. So let's go ahead and yeah. have that special for there, mm-hmm. and then we'll have it on Disney Plus a couple of days later. They still could but here's two episodes. episodes they could have done one episode at a time if they wanted. I just some shows I think it is smart to like, even though they were halfway through the season in less than a week since it I mean, was you released. Have- so. You have the three episode rule with anime, so it's just like, and I think it applies to a lot of TV shows too. It's like give it a couple episodes. I say apply it to all comedies, but not necessarily all dramas. Comedies are interesting. I feel like comedies. I hate to say this, you need to give more. Like maybe we'll like need to five give it a episodes. second season with most comedies because they change so much. Sometimes they can, yeah. right? Like Thirty Rock it goes this. from a semi serious. So okay, he. Oh, so, Thirty Jonesy's... Rock was never a semi serious. Well, no, show. but season two was full cartoon. Season one, it was like realistic. They're talking, they were, they were saying crazy stuff, but it's not like th- there's gas in the air vents that's making everyone go oh crazy for like an episode. But anyway, wait. So you're two episodes. Wait, I'm sorry. I'm gonna go back to Obi Wan. You're two episodes in to uh, Obi or Obi Wan Jammer. Obi Wan, yeah. Does it bother you that Leia is using the Force? It's yeah. funny because Kyle just had this whole argument where I was just like, "Is she using the Force?" I didn't, I didn't even realize notice she was using the Force. I didn't notice it. I thought she was just intuitive and empathetic, no. like with the droids. We said this right, but like, yeah, she's like, "Dro, why, why didn't she?" I, I think she's droid? using. I no, think she's using the though. same. I think she's using the Force in the same way that Anakin used the Force to drive the pod racer. That's okay. been my, no. that is my experience. so yeah. I'm okay yeah, with that. I have no problem with completely. It Disti- like she doesn't know she's using the force it's just yeah yeah i'm okay with that she thinks it's instinct everyone around her thinks it's instinct again i thought it's way. instinct well i think it's instinct in the same again pod racer yeah, he same didn't thing. know he was using the force to be the only human who was fast enough to pilot one it was yeah. just i'm just force manifesting now this okay. is pod racing oh god wizard okay. it finally became what do you say i'll do a barrel roll you say I'll do a barrel roll? That was, was like, that's a neat trick. That's a that's a neat trick. Fuck you. God damn it. Fuck you, George Lucas. <laughs> Shall we end the show? <laughs> yeah, let's let's move on before I slander more children. Younglings. <sighs> younglings. So. Slaughter more younglings. Anyway. Master Skywalker, <laughs> they're everywhere. What are we going to do? <laughs> Man, those children. Anyway. Dear listener, if you like what you heard, and who wouldn't like us making fun of that horrible, horrible scene? Killing younglings! 
do all the socials like rate comment subscribe share we would definitely appreciate it also jump on the discord and let us know what you think of any of the things we talked about today be they stranger things or obi-wan or any of the trailers it's a good time we definitely appreciate having you there also go ahead and check out other rooms other great content where else in genre first podcast network and lrm online.com jammer where can you be found you can find me on twitter at jam the writer or all of my books under the name aj cerna on amazon or audible nick doll where can you be found i am found uh on my couch having a uh, covid um I'm also are you, how, you, how are you feeling you feeling better other than yesterday but i hear that you, cough apparently not well that's my cigarette <laughs> cough um, yeah it doesn't help like are I you smoking when again I, when I, yeah when yeah. i first moved to colorado i just remember being like i don't know and he like starts going I, 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 i'm like oh my god are you sick it's like no i just have cigarettes i was like oh i never <laughs> you know if you're actually you sick COVID. um i'm at geeky nick doll on twitter um and we haven't gotten one done this week because of covid but we do uh, kyle and i do marvel marvel multiverse mayhem so and I, I, by the way, guys, uh, even though I don't want thoughts and prayers, you can send me cash. I <laughs> know that'd be cool. You should, yeah, you should go ahead and put your like your Venmo QR code on the show I'm notes. I'm not gonna do so that. People can scan it. <laughs> <laughs> and you can That's find me cool. sharing stuff on social media at Sir Jones's, and of course, right here on Breaking Geek Radio, the podcast. Folks, as always, thanks for listening. We will catch you on the next one. Hasta lasagna. Hasta <laughs> Mission. It's like, what about me? You're like, what?